hello everyone welcome back to spectrum classes in this video i am going to show you the lab activity related to the determination of turbidity by using nephelometric turbidity meter so here in this video i am just going to show you the lab activity related to the calibration of nephelometric turbidity meter as well as how to determine the turbidity of a given water sample right but before that we are going through the basic concept of this turbidity so here first we are going to understand what is called turbidity so turbidity is the measure of cloudiness or haziness caused by the undissolved suspended particles in other words it is an optical determination of water clarity that is this part we are going to discuss in the next slide now we are going to discuss which is cause this turbidity so total suspended solids so what is called this total suspended solids as i told you here undissolved suspended particles so total sus suspended solids are those particles which have bigger size they are greater than 2 microns right so those are considered as suspended particles and here through this turbidity we are going to measure these total suspended solids now units of the measurement so this turbidity is measured in two different units one is nephelometric turbidity unit which is represented by ntu and the other one is jackson turbidity unit which is represented by jtu right and for the drinking water the safe limits for this drinking water was prescribed by world health organization r 0 to 5 ntu if our water is having turbidity less than 1 ntu then it is ideal but if has it has its turbidity between 1 to 5 range then that is okay but more than 5 ntu it is not permissible right now coming to the causes of turbidity so what is cause turbidity so suspended particles as well as colloidal particles cause this turbidity here i'm just going to show you an example so here you can clearly see different type of turbidity so here this is deionized water and this is having less turbidity as compared to this and this is having different kind of turbidity fine but here i'm just going to grab your attention on this third point that dissolved particle doesn't cause any kind of turbidity so here i'm just going to show you an example so here we are having this solution in this solution i have dissolved some salt and it is transparent so here we can say the dissolved particles doesn't cause any kind of turbidity now coming to the next how to measure the turbidity so to measure the turbidity in two different points one is in the field test and the other one is in the laboratory test we are having different methods to measure the turbidity one is turbidity road which is used in field test and the other one which is used in field test is sagi disc and in the laboratory we can determine the turbidity by using the jackson candle turbidity meter bellis turbidity meter and the nephelometric turbidity meter now we are going to see jackson candle turbidity meter so for this purpose we are having this beaker and at the bottom of this beaker we have just marked such kind of mark with the help of the marker and we place this beaker on the this is the uh, slit through which the light of this candle is passes right and here is the light candle so in this beaker we are just filling our solution for which we are going to measure the turbidity and we are seeing this solution from this side so that we can see the light from this candle and up to the mark we are just measuring the height till the light of this candle is visible after that point we are just going to determine and we will see the height of the solution through this jackson candle turbidity meter we can measure the lowest 25 units below this 
we are not able to measure the turbidity right the other one is nephelo turbidity meter the arrangement or the schematic diagram for this turbidity meter is given over here this is based on the scattering of light principle why it is so that i will tell you so here in this case we are having one source of light which is usually a tungsten filament which gives light in the uv visible range and here is the monochromator the light passes through this monochromator and it falls on the cuvette this cuvette is filled with the sample and the particles in the sample are of bigger size as compared to the wavelength of the light when these particles are bigger in light then some of the part some of the part of this light is absorbed some of the part of the light is transmitted transmitted through the solution and since these particles are bigger in size therefore they scatter the light and since absorption and transmittance due to these bigger size particles is not that sensitive as compared to the scattering of light so this nephelo turbidity meter is a sensitive method as compared to the other ones right so here the detector is placed at right angle to this incident light and it measures the scattered light and from which we are going to determine the turbidity here i am going to show you the picture of this nephelo turbidity meter which we are going to see in the lab activity now how to calibrate the turbidity meter so for this purpose we are using two different salts one is hexamethylene tetramine and the other one is hydrazine sulfate this hexamethylene tetramine we are taking in 10 grams in and it is dissolved in 100 ml of distilled water this hydrazine sulfate we are taking 1 grams of this hydrazine sulfate and we are dissolving it in 100 ml now i'm going to show you the reaction so here is the structure of this hexamethylene tetramine and here is the hydrazine sulfate and here we are getting this this formaldehyde and ammonium sulfate from this and now this formaldehyde and this hydrazine part of this hydrazine sulfate they react together and they form this formazine this is a polymer right so this formazine is a polymer and this because of this formazine the unit of turbidity is also determined in terms of formazine turbidity unit here i am going to show you the pictures we are taking 5 5 ml of each and we kept that solution for 24 hours and we will get a solution of 400 ntu right and from this 400 ntu which seems like this and we will uh, prepare the solution of 100 NTU but in literature it is mentioned that it is better to have lower limits of the NTU up to 40 40 NTU is better less than 40 NTU is better to determine right now I am just going to show you how we are just going to mention the total suspended solids in the given turbid solution so here i'm just going to bring to your kind notice that this is the tss through this we are going to determine the total suspended solids so these are the total suspended solids so how we are going to measure the total mass of the total suspended solids here so this is reported in milligrams per liter and but the question comes we are measuring the NT solution turbidity of the solution in NTU then how we are going to report the total suspended solid mass in milligrams per liter so here is a relation that 1 ppm is equal to 3 NTU and as we know 1 ppm is equal to 1 milligrams per liter so 1 milligrams per liter is equal to 3 NTU so whatever be the turbidity unit we are getting from the nephelo turbidity meter that will be divided by 3 and we will get the milligrams per liter for a given sample right i hope you find this video helpful if you find this video helpful please like share and subscribe thank you all thanks for watching